Linda Yoshizawa. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm a printmaker. Well, I was an art major in college. Um, I was always interested in art um, and um, so I kind of always thought I would be an artist even when I was young. I was also a math major. So I entered college um, as a math major thinking I would maybe do a double major art and math. But um, my sophomore year I decided you know, I really can live without the math, but I couldn't live without the art. So I really focused in on being an art major on my, my junior year in college. When I was in college, um, I focused on watercolor and collage. And um, after that, I did some serigraph prints. And now I'm doing uh, monotypes and collage. And I can see that all of those past experiences have kind of helped to mold what I'm doing now. So you'll see elements of my watercolor, uh, the technique, and of the serigraph techniques in my monotypes now. Okay, the first thing is I do a lot of sketching when I, um, I take walks in the neighborhood or places like I, I either do some sketching or I take photos of nature. And usually my themes are nature-inspired, nature-related. So I, I like uh, branches and leaves and trees. Um, and when I see something that's kind of interesting, I take a picture and then I come back to my studio and um, I, drew this, I draw the sketches onto large sheets of tracing paper. I usually start with colors in mind or it, and maybe the orientation of the print, if it's gonna be horizontal or vertical. And I, um, I roll ink onto just a plain sheet of plexiglass and um, you know, I mixed my colors and I used rollers and brayers to put ink onto the plexiglass. Uh, meanwhile, I've been soaking printmaking paper in a bath because the paper has to be, um, it also has sizing on it and the water will take some of the sizing off so that it'll absorb the ink better. And um, I use BFK Reeves printmaking paper normally um, there's several different papers I, I can use, but I like the BFK, it's, it's a little firmer, it's, it's archival, but it's, it holds up. So that paper has to be blotted, and then um, I place that onto the plexiglass that's now got ink on it, and then I um, run it through my etching press. So that, that's sort of like my background color. And um, after I run it through, then sometimes I do a second layer of color, uh, sometimes I put texture on that, like I either splatter water on it or I put brush marks on it so that there's something interesting going on. It's just not a solid color. So that's the first day of printing. And I usually do um, several in that day because I've mixed up the color. So I usually do maybe up to eight prints of your know, background prints the first day. And those have to dry completely. So I usually put them out and I have a, a drying area and those dry for maybe two days. Then on the second day of printing, I choose the tracing paper drawing that I want to print. I put that on my table and I put the, a plain sheet of plexiglass now on top of that. And I draw the image, or I trace it with a very thin bead of oil. I have an applicator bottle that has a tip, a very fine tip, and I draw with oil. I use a brush to sort of, you know, spread it out, but it has to be very, very thin. So I've mixed up my ink, and I've drawn the image with the oil, and then I roll the ink onto a large roller that I have. I have actually several size rollers. I roll the ink onto that, and then I roll the ink over my drawing. And because I use water-based ink, the oil acts like a resist. And so wherever I've drawn the image, the oil, the, the ink doesn't go where the drawing is, so it's open. And then what I do is after I roll it, I pick up the roller and I kind of shift it a little bit and I roll it again. And what the interesting thing that happens is that image has made an impression or onto my roller. And so when I roll it a second time, it actually prints like a ghost behind the image. So it's a kind of a, an accident that I saw happen one time and I said, oh, that is really cool. And because also, it, depending on the size of the roller, the image will repeat 
depending on the circumference of the rollers. And then I get the paper from the previous day that had the background color. I put that over the um, plate and then I run that through the press. And, and then that's basically what it is. Uh, sometimes it's, it looks great the way it is. Sometimes I think it needs a little more and, um, and that's the artist in me. I think, oh, it could use a little more uh, something. And so I, I sometimes cut off a piece and I do yet another layer of the, maybe if I've done the light color the second time, then I'll print another dark color and I'll get something uh, with a similar drawing and I border that and I, that, those are collaged pieces onto the original piece. So the process from start to finish usually takes about two weeks, um, but usually at the end of the two weeks I've finished several prints. I have a lot of um, Japanese influence, you know, a lot has to do with the fact that my mother is from Japan and um, a lot of things that um, I grew up, um, like all my life lessons I say, are, were metaphors with using nature as an example. For example, she'd say, oh, you should be like the bamboo that sways with the wind and not bend, you know, that bends and not breaks. So you should be saying that, you know, you have to be flexible. Um, she also said, you know, the, the grass is often trotted upon, but it still comes back, um, you know, and things like that that she would use to encourage me or to, to give me lessons in life. And that's why I picked those things um, as my subject matter because I find those things to be very inspiring and you know when I walk I look for things like that maybe the branch that's not perfect but it bent around something else so that it gets more light or had to go past an obstacle in some way um, so I find those things to be very um, inspirational for me and also very comforting because those were the, the kinds of things my mother would tell me. The other very strong influence is my father, who was a judo instructor. He had us starting judo very at a young age. Um, he really felt that it was a character building thing, and he also used it as, um, again, as lessons and as in character. And he said, how you, you know, if you practice hard and if you're disciplined, that those things will come out in your movements. And so when I draw, I, all, I, all, I think about that and I, I think about doing the perfect line with just one movement, you know, and if it sometimes it comes out wiggly or not right, I go, okay, that's because I'm not, I'm not centered today and I need to, you know, be more focused. And, and I, you know, I think about my stance and I think about my movements and, you know, and I, f I feel like those things then will come out in the drawing. And, and it's again, it's, a, it's an influence of, you know, my father, and, and my mother, and um, and because you know, there's a lot of Japanese tradition and you know some Zen teachings in there, I think that comes out. Even though I grew up in uh, Los Angeles, and um, all of my art training has been Western, um, but I, there's something about all of those teachings that that does come out in my art, and I think that kind of makes my work a little bit unique. I can tell when there's. Um, I take a long break, you know, like during the holidays or, you know, we, uh, when I'm not working and then I am just very antsy to get back in. It's sort of something I, I have to do. It's almost like um, that you don't pick art, but that art picks you. And I, that I really feel that, that that was something I was, I was meant to do. And um, I'm the happiest when I'm in here.